Hi there, good afternoon, how's it going? This is Humbug Campground on the way to Brighton Bush Hot Springs. I am driving there right now, car parked down there. The campground is closed for the season. Today is April 8th, but I thought that I would stop here and tell a story which relates basically the first time that I was aware of Brighton Bush Hot Springs and also when I stayed at this campground back in 1993. So in March of 1993, then I moved from California to Eugene, Oregon. That summer I went on a road trip and drove out into Eastern Oregon, which is one of the ultimate road trip experiences. I was super broke at the time, had this little uh, old car, I forget what it was, maybe a Toyota, and uh, I camped the whole time, driving, you know, hours east into Oregon, into the desert in the middle of summer, and at the end of that trip, then I ended up here and stayed a night, or maybe even two, at Humbug Campground there. So. At the time, then, I was vaguely aware of Brighton Bush Hot Springs. I was a Hot Springs enthusiast. I knew that Brighton Bush Hot Springs was a pay hot spring. You can't just show up. Not like a, uh, you know, wild, just walk down a trail hot springs experience. And so it was out of my budget. I couldn't afford hotels at the time. I was just uh, camping and keeping the expenses at a bare minimum. It was like a week-long... Uh, road trip camping adventure. And so I stayed here for the night and I remember finishing the book The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, recommend it, and also I believe that my car didn't start when I went to uh, leave here and I don't recall exactly how I got out of that predicament. Maybe I found somebody at the campground to start up my uh, car, jump it for me, but uh, somehow I got that uh, solved and drove back to Eugene and uh, got back to my life there. The first time that I actually went to Brighton Bush Hot Springs wasn't until many years later. I don't remember exactly which uh, year, but I moved to Portland, came to Brighton Bush for the first time, probably around like 2004, I think, with a girlfriend of mine at the time. And since then, then I've been back many, many times. So let's uh, stop the rambling memory lane stories and uh, hop in the uh, Honda CRV here, get up to Brighton Bush Hot Springs. There is no cell phone service out here. There is no Wi-Fi. They do have phones out at uh, Brighton Bush in an emergency uh, situation, but uh, it is another 15 minutes or so up to Brighton Bush. Let's get there and go soak in the hot water. There you can see Brighton Bush Retreat Center to the right, turning off of the uh, main road there. Entering burned area. There was a major fire here a few years ago, which badly damaged the area, including burning down I think all of the cabins that you can stay in at Brighton Bush, luckily not including the communal main lodge, which I will be showing in the video, but then they rebuilt the uh, cabins that you can stay in, and I will be showing my little cabin bungalow room. So you can see evidence of the uh, fires. It was a bad one. So while I drive along here, I thought that I would talk a little bit about the uh, practicalities of staying here so that I don't have to be talking once I arrive because, of course, it is a, you know, private experience and I don't want to be bothering anyone, including filming anybody there. But I will do my best to actually film what I can of the uh, pools and the lodge, etc. But 
my room is $187 for my own private little room and that includes three meals. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, that includes the uh, soaking in the uh, springs, that includes everything, taxes, etc. $187. Today is a Monday, so the uh, cheapest time to come is midweek in winter. The prices go up on the weekends, the prices go up in the summer. There is also the option of day use, just driving out here and staying for the day. And there are workshops that are held in communal buildings there on various subjects. And so those are basically your three main options for visiting here. And for all of them, then you have to book in advance on brightonbush.com. You can't just show up and expect to be able to uh, visit even for day use. So here we are. This is the little uh, welcome booth. You park here, stop over there. They will let you in. It is right about three o'clock and you can arrive as early as three o'clock. You get 24 full hours. So arrive at three. I can't check into my room until four, but we'll see if maybe, you know, it's available now anyways. And then you have to check out of your room the next day, so tomorrow at 1 p.m., but then you can stay on the premises until 3 p.m. And so you get a full 24 hours to enjoy the place. All right, I'm going to check in and uh, then walk around a bit and see what I can show you of this Amazing place, one of my favorite places in the world. Welcome to Brighton Bush Hot Springs. Over the years, the guidelines below have evolved to help ensure a safe and enjoyable experience for you and for us. While you are a guest in our home, please observe the following guidelines. Clothing is optional and bathing areas only, etc, etc. I'm going to uh, show the new cabins so here you can get a sense of uh what burned down this whole section just got ripped through by the forest fire and so there were uh, other cabins here that were really cute and rustic i like them more easier than these cabins but uh at least the fire left some trees standing. You can see snow up there on the higher mountains. There is oftentimes snow here. I was last here just two months ago and there was snow on the ground right around here. So I got uh, checked in. There are some carts next to the parking lot to bring your stuff down, but uh, I can't actually move into my room for another uh, 45 minutes, so going to walk into the uh, middle of things here and do my best to show what I can and then show my room once I can check in. I'm in F1, so it's going to be uh, one of these rooms around here. There is also the option of sleeping in your own vehicle. There are also rooms inside the main lodge, so there is a variety of different uh, ways to stay here. And then here you can see you also have the option of bringing your own tent and setting it up on one of these platforms. And over here are a couple of the communal buildings that survived. Although I'm not sure about this reddish colored one here. Maybe that is new. Yes, I think so. And the wooden one, I believe, is an old one. 
Why are hot springs here? Where do Brighton Bush's hot springs come from? Geothermal heat is produced in nearly equal proportions by the energy generated during formation of the planet and by the radioactive decay of materials. Okay, I'm not going to uh, read all of this, but it is natural hot springs, water, geothermal coming out of the ground. And it is also used to heat the buildings. So there's a sign there, it says private guest room. Okay, so that's actually a place you stay. And then this also says private guest room. Okay, that might be since the fires because I'm pretty sure that that was a communal space that you could go inside if nobody was using it and meditate, do yoga, etc. And also workshops would have been held in there, but looks like they are now making use of it as a uh, private uh, room. Okay. Sounds like an alarm. No fires happening, it looks like. And here's the main lodge. Really spectacular. And so lucky that it survived. Apparently, the only reason that it did survive the fire is because a couple of people stayed behind when the fire was approaching specifically to try to save this amazing lodge here, and they succeeded. So this is where meals are served. And there are a couple of rooms, restrooms, and I think the gift shop is now there. Okay, here you can see the hot water steaming out of the ground. Danger, scalding, 180 degrees. Of course, that is Fahrenheit, so almost boiling. Now, I forget what this is here, but I know one of these buildings is a sauna. Okay, this is one of the, uh, yeah, like pumps. Lots of thermometers pumping the water out of the ground, I guess. Heat from Mother Earth. So I just checked and nobody is in here, so I can show you the inside of Not sure if it's a sauna or steam room. I think it must be a steam room because it's very steamy. Yeah, there goes the uh, lens on my camera. And now you can't see anything, but uh, there we go. So a couple of uh, tubs for, I think, cold soaking. Yes, cold water. Cold water. And some of the soaking pools are out here. I am seeing people, so might not be able to get a shot right now. Okay, good news, nobody is here at this pool. There's another one behind me and there's a whole like didgeridoo group musical session going on. So I couldn't show that, but uh, here you can see covered uh, benches, place to put your stuff, and then 
the hot water, cold shower. They are varying temperatures. I think this one is the hottest of these three pools out here. And then my favorite ones are the spiral tubs, which are down there. And there are four different temperatures of tubs all in a circle and then a cold soak there. So I'll walk down there and see if I can show them. River Yurt Spiral Tubs Labyrinth. Back at the lodge here. The Spiral Tubs and Labyrinth are down here. Now, I already saw that there are people in the uh, tubs down there, so I won't be able to show them up close, but uh, we can go walk the Labyrinth. So the four spiral tubs are right there. And then I saw something else that I hadn't seen before. It might be relatively new. Over there, which uh, maybe were more saunas or something because there were people soaking in more of the uh, like bathing tubs but I don't think they would have been just sitting there in cold water without something hot around, so not sure what was there, but people were there as well, so can't go show that. But here you have the labyrinth. So it is a meditative walk. And so you just kind of keep going. It's you know, a bit of a walk because you got to go back and forth and then you get to the center and then walk back out. I guess that is the river yurt. Not sure if that is a private room or used for workshops. But uh, let's take a closer look at the river. So if you want to do a real cold plunge, then I guess you can go for it. Not the uh, easiest way to cool off. I really like the back and forth between the hot and the cold, which is one of the reasons that I like the uh, spiral tubs, because there is the cold plunge right there and so I like to go between the uh, hot pools and then cool off in the cold plunge for a bit and then also use the varying temperatures because they steadily go up. There are four tubs there at the spiral tubs and the first one is like 99 or 100 degrees. The second one is maybe 103 or 104, the uh, third one 105 or 106, and the fourth one 107, 108, around there. And so Brighton Bush is a retreat center but also a community, so the staff that works here also lives here. And so there's a whole sort of village out here where the staff lives. So I'll walk over there and show what I can of that. There's a bridge over the river up here. Devil's Peak. 4520 feet, Devil's Lookout 3600, Spotted Owl Knob 2860, 
Devil's Ridge. So here you can see it says Community Village, please enter with invitation only. So not going to walk through there, but you can see very cute little cabins. It looks like old style, so these must have survived the fire, fortunately. Okay, time to uh, get checked into my room and I will show you what it's like. Very simple with shared bathroom. So it looks like these are rooms here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice paint job. And then here you have some outdoor showers. But then there are nicer restrooms over here. Let's see if uh, I can go ahead and just film my room now before I actually move my stuff in. So here we are. Looks like it's all clean and ready to go. So notice no locks. You can lock the door from the inside for when you're inside there, but uh, you can't lock it from the outside when you're gone. So leave your valuables at home or locked in your car or whatever, but you know, it's uh, definitely a low crime area. So small, simple, but uh, tastefully done. And then the restrooms are right there, new, modern. There are restrooms with just a toilet, with just a shower, and then with both. All right, that's gonna do it. Time for me to relax. More coming from somewhere. I have no idea even where I'm going next other than heading back to Salem to hang with my friend Eric for a couple of days and then I will probably be journeying onwards from there. We shall see where I head next. See ya.